removed the anchor and I tested it with a multimeter by holding it there and then to the back and it does it's it is making contact I don't know why there's that much noise well that's that's not that much noise that might be normal I don't know I had the gain up higher on it or something but anyway there's a bunch of small things I have to do uh, kind of uh, I'll be stripping it and then next and then um uh, getting it ready to refinish. I'm going to go for the dark back again like this and the uh, not going to reshape the neck at all. Uh, it feels fine. It's great. I don't think it's been changed at all. Like I said, I think it was refinished in the late 50s by Gibson. If it, that's the case, I don't know why they didn't put on the Les Paul screening there. They, that was not there. Uh, and neither was the serial number, so maybe it wasn't redone by Gibson. Maybe it was done by some uh, somebody else. But the right, the color was right, and it was weather checked nice. But I mean, with with that thing having to be patched, uh, there's no way that it could be a flame top. Uh, I already, you can look through the finish on a gold top, and you can see how many pieces it was. And this was a three-piece top. I don't expect to find any flame. Uh, if it was insanely flame, I would, uh, you know, send a picture to the owner and say, or, I know if you'd hit, overlook all this junk, but I mean, I mean, you look at Willie Nelson's trigger with that big hole in the thing. And, you know, the, these are, like I said, they're, they're for sound. And I don't know if it's a coincidence, but usually the ones that are, are the hardest to look at are the the easiest to listen to. <laughs> I think because they were played a lot and or playing them a lot made them sound good but this this has the tone in spades. I'm gonna switch to the uh, the Marshall set up clean. That's in the clean channel. And this does have a big clean sound. I mean because these were the bass in the circuit. I got it hooked up through that's a 66 JTM 45 and a vintage cab, and that's a, a hand-wired cab. They're both hooked up to that. That's the middle position. that you get in the middle position that kind of reminds you of uh finish because a gold tap is a lot harder to do than a sunburst because of uh, the gun. I've done one gold tap so far and it was really hard to do trying to keep the gun from clogging up and trying to get it to lay on there right and 
uh, the mess that it makes. You can only use one dedicated gun for it. You can never use that gun for other colors because you'll never be able to get the, uh, the bronze powder out of it. So to get the right tint to it and everything, um, you know, I wish this could be a sunburst, but uh, and another thing is that every single all this stuff is going to show under the gold paint. We already discussed that. Uh, it won't at first, but after the humidity and temperatures change a few times, everything will show through there. Uh, and I don't want to put some kind of a thick coating on there before I uh, do it, you know, because that would probably kill the tone. I didn't want to do a veneer tone because the owner was completely against it, and I've never done it. Although I could probably do it if I, uh, you know, got a um, vacuum bag system and the, uh, studied up on the veneer and everything and get make sure that everything is exact, you know. But uh, I don't know if I trust a veneer not to lift up later or split. And uh, I, uh, the, But the major thing is that is I think a veneer would kind of be like uh, coating it in something thick. It would it'd be worse than a thick finish, I think. Uh, and... Uh, it up.